Gadata, Haggadah of Rav Yaakov Galinsky, Zeche Tzadik Livracha, on page 212. A matter of life and death. The Torah says in Parshas Vayera, you'd test Lamed to Lamed, Ches, Vayat Loit Mitzoyar, Vayeshe Bemara Hu Ushte Benoisov, Va Taharena Shte Benois Loit Ma'avihem. The tailor habechira bain vetikra shmoy moyav, who avi moyav ad hayoin. The had si ira gamhi yalda bain, vetikra shmoy ben ami. The had si ira, who avi bene amoin ad hayoin. Light went up from Tsoyar. He dwelt in a cave with his two daughters. Lot's two daughters conceived from their father. The older bore a son, and she called his name Moav. He is the ancestor of Moab until this day. And the younger one also bore a son, and she called his name Ben-Ami. He is the ancestor of the children of Amoin until this day. When Maran Hagaon Harav Moshe Feinstein, Zeche Tzadik Livracha, who lived from 1895 to 1986, the Poisek Hador, the Rosh Moetzes Gedele HaTorah, and Rosh Yeshivas Mesifta Teferis Yerushalayim, was beginning his rabbinical career. He was appointed as the Rav of Luban in Russia, and he remained in the position for 16 years. The communist authorities made sure to isolate him from his congregation, and they insinuated that anyone who had any ties to him would be sent to a labor camp in Siberia. The fear and terror felt by the community was so great that the people were afraid simply to say hello to him. But there was one Jew in Luban, a learned man, who had been in an accident. His legs had been amputated, Rahman and Litzlan, and he wasn't afraid that the authorities would send him to a labor camp. Indeed, Rav Moshe would visit this man every Shabbos day. Every Friday night, especially on the long winter Friday nights, the Jews of the community would come to this Jew's house and he would give a shear on the Pasha. On the Shabbos day of Pasha's Vayera, Rav Moshe came to visit him as usual, and the Jew said to him, today, I'm going to die. Rav Moshe was shaken. How can you speak like that? The Jew explained that the night before, people had come to his house to hear his shear on the Pasha as usual, and he spoke about Lot's daughters. He explained that after the destruction of Sodom, their father brought them to a cave to live. They thought the whole world had been destroyed and that they must have children with their father in order to continue the world. The Gemara says that they thought that they were doing a mitzvah and they were saving the world. But when they left the cave, they saw they had made a huge mistake and the rest of the world was not actually destroyed. How then could they think it was fitting to name their children by their actions? One named her son Moyav, implying the son of my father, and the other called her son Ben-Ami, implying the son of my nation. And this man came to the conclusion that these daughters had exhibited a clear violation of sneers. That night, two old women appeared in a dream. They were dressed extremely sneers, covered in black from head to toe, and they introduced themselves as Lot's daughters. They told him that they were summoning him to a din tur in Shemayim, since he had slandered them and judged them unfavorably. Everyone knew that we were righteous. After all, the angels saved us from the destruction of Sodom. So when we became pregnant, people would have assumed that we had conceived miraculously, and they would attribute godliness to these children, as the Christians did 2,000 years later. We agreed instead to allow ourselves to be humiliated and scorned and announce the circumstances of our son's births through their names so that no one would make such a terrible blunder. We spared mankind from falling victim to false messiahs. Since our intentions, our intentions were pure to prevent the rise of a false messiah, we merited that Mashiach ben David would descend from our offspring. Rus, from the nation of Moab, was David HaMelech's great-grandmother, and Naama from Amoin was Shloimeh HaMelech's wife, the mother of Rachavam. But since you judged us unfavorably, we are summoning you to a din Torah in Shemayim. That night, this Jew's tongue, which he used to say these words, swelled to the point that it obstructed his breathing 
and he suffocated to death. 